KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, protecting Micronesia for 85 years. Matson and the Adahi Itano program. Apply at matson.com. Cars Plus, Guam's automotive leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime. An intruder makes his way into a home here in this rather quiet area along Turner Road in Petey. Neighbors sharing how they look out for one another to keep crime here down. I'm Julian Hernandez with a story coming up. A recent evaluation finding the judiciary has excessive influence over attorneys fighting for defendants who can't afford legal counsel. I'm Mitsuki Hariyama with the push for an independent board. And the latest on the realignment of forces to Guam. Hear from the commander of Joint Region Mariana speaking before Guam's business community. Half a day and buenas noches. Buen venido para KUAM News Primetime. Guahu Sinek Delgado. Sa Guahu si Dustin Cruz. Si Dios ma asi puri manyano mizu guini na programa. Well, we begin with a developing story out of Agatnia today. Two swimmers rescued after first responders found them 20 feet below the surface. This unfolding around noon today at the Hagatnya Boat Basin. Take a look at video of Guam Fire Department crews on scene. Divers were seen pulling up one swimmer, bringing them to the surface. First responders then performed CPR as they put the swimmer into the ambulance. CPR was also performed on the second rescued swimmer. GFD spokesperson Nick Garrido says one person was taken to Guam Memorial Hospital while the other was rushed to Naval Hospital. The conditions of both men remain unknown as of news time. Another frightening Tuesday morning, this time for a Sinahanya family waking up to find a stranger in their bedrooms. The suspect allegedly telling police, quote, Sir, I didn't mean to go in the girl's room. 25-year-old Ann Ludwig is charged with burglary, criminal trespass, and harassment. Court documents state the suspect climbed the window into the teenage girl's bedroom. He allegedly closed her bedroom door before turning on her light. When the victim woke up and yelled at the suspect, he allegedly ran out of the same window. But he wasn't done yet. Authorities say Ludwig allegedly tried to go into another room in the home. Officers arrested him later that morning. Police noting he smelled like alcohol. Prison records show Ludwig was also arrested in 2018 on charges of assault and aggravated assault. Now to a follow-up on a story we brought you on Primetime Tuesday. A peaceful southern neighborhood rocked by a home invasion. The community on high alert and staying vigilant. Julian Hernandez reports. A quiet neighborhood up the hill along Turner Road in Petey. Almost every home is gated with security cameras. But Monday brought an alarming scene. Neighbor Remy Abaro recalled what she saw near her home that morning. You said that you saw the police car. Yeah, in, in front of their house. Yeah, their uniform is, uh, what do you call that uniform? Like the marshals there, the, oh. the, the court. She later learned her neighbor woke up to find an intruder in his home. Documents state the victim detained the intruder until police showed up. Abaro says anyone can be a target. Maybe one time we will be the next one, but I should be, we, we, we should be careful. Although Trisha Jones shares the same concern, she still feels safe because of how tight-knit the neighborhood is. We have a WhatsApp group just for everybody to watch out for all the homes and uh, take care of each other on the hill, kind of like a neighborhood watch. So we're all good about watching out for each other. And uh, we all just kind of sent out alert like, OK, watch out for my home. She even applauds on how her neighbor handled the situation. I'm from Texas, so I believe that, uh, you know, we do have right to bear arms. If someone's breaking in my home and and it's going to be my life or my children's, yes, we will defend ourselves. However, despite this sense of security, this wasn't the only robbery that happened within the past few months. Civic League President Shepard De Benedictus, who also lives in the area, said that there had been at least three theft incidents in the neighborhood. One of them was his own, saying, I had running boards taken off my Tacoma last week right in my driveway. He added that other parts from his car were also taken. As KUAM reported, the intruder was identified as 46-year-old Mark Nedadog. He was charged with burglary, criminal trespass, and resisting arrest. Julian Hernandez, KUAM News. 
Well, you have a right to an attorney, and if you can't afford an attorney, you still may not get one, or at least an effective one. It's this harsh disparity that the nonprofit organization Six Amendment Center is examining, uncovering, and helping to fix across the nation, and most recently, Guam. As Mitsuki Hiriyama reports in part two of the Right to Counsel on Guam, their recent evaluation reveals there's undue justice, judiciary rather, influence over our indigent defense system. Does every indigent person or those charged with a crime but unable to afford an attorney still receive effective representation? While this right to counsel is protected by the 6th and 14th Amendment, there are systemic disparities even in Guam. A recent evaluation by nonprofit organization Six Amendment Center revealing there is, quote, undue judicial influence over our indigent defense system. Six Amendment Center Deputy Director Aditi Goel. The indigent defense system, it is very young but the indigent defense system is overseen by a board that has judges on it, both the chief justice as well as the presiding judge, and they appoint other members of the board. Sixth Amendment Center Executive Director David Carroll explains why having judges oversee the Public Defense Service Corporation can pose a problem. You know, there may not be uh, a lot of uh, zealous advocacy on the part of the defendants as far as filing motions and other things like that. Um, there's there's uh, long delays at the beginning of the process to actually get counsel. And then once you have counsel, they, they often uh, need to just do what needs to be done to sort of get the case processed and moved along. Plus, regardless of their qualifications or willingness, the court has the ability to appoint any active private attorney to a criminal case when a public defender or alternate public defender has a conflict of interest. Just because someone has a bar card doesn't mean they can be a good criminal defense lawyer. Um, you wouldn't go to a dermatologist for brain surgery, even both are licensed physicians. It's a similar thing. Um, a real estate lawyer is not trained to properly defend a client. It's why the Sixth Amendment Center recommends Guam to create an independent right to counsel commission overseen by members from all three branches of government. Every single indigent defendant has a constitutional right to have counsel that's independent and that is advocating just solely for their interests. It's a recommendation these experts are committed to helping policymakers navigate. Matsuki Hariyama, KUAM News. And in part three, we will unpack the complete findings and recommendations. Well, the Marines are still coming. The commander of Joint Region Marianas, Naval Region Marianas, is giving updates on how many and how soon. It's no secret the military population on island is on course to double in time. Yes, we are going to eventually wind up doubling the military population, but over the course of about 10 to 15 years. But the timeline for when the first wave of what the Marines called the first movers will be here is already set for this year. Rear Admiral Gregory Huffman, commander of Joint Region Marianas, Naval Region Marianas, confirming about 100 personnel will set the groundwork for logistical needs to bring in more Marines in the future. Right now, the plan is for on the, on the order of about 5,000 Marines total to wind up here on Guam. There will be a, a core group that will be uh, permanently stationed here, and they will be operating and managing things, and then a large group will just be rotating through. And while plans for those rotating through are on a six-month rotation, Huffman says the island shouldn't expect to see large numbers of Marines for a few years. He says the next increase is expected to come from the U.S. Army. Meantime, Huffman says the military population growth in Guam is estimated to be 45,000 in the next 10 to 15 years, including rotational forces, active duty service members, Department of Defense civilians, and dependents. Well, the Department of Defense's construction of a divert airfield on Tinian is on track to be completed by October 2025, bringing a much-needed boost to the local economy amid rising tensions in the region. Regional correspondent Tomas Maglodio reports. It's been two years since the Department of Defense broke ground on the divert airfield project on Tinian. KUAM was there when one military official described it as the largest and most important Air Force project in the region. Lieutenant Victor Obando with the Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command is the resident officer in charge of construction overseeing projects outside of Guam. As of right now, currently still going on setting operations for um, clearing, for getting the right elevation for the ground, uh, as well as prepping essentially the, the earthwork movement piece of this project. 
um, at the moment. The second phase would include the fuel tanks, the off-roads, off-site roads, cargo pads to include the taxiways, as well as the maintenance support facility. That one was awarded at $221 million. The project is still on track to be completed by contractor Black Micro Corporation in October 2025. Joint Region Marianas told KUAM that divert airfields are used in the event that an aircraft cannot land at the original airfield in its flight plan for any reason. The developments come with many jobs, but there have been local concerns about help needed to train the workforce to do those jobs. Our team here on, on uh, NAFAC side, NAFAC Marianas, um, have been looking into seeing opportunities to seek to set up trainings to give the opportunity for locals to get those up-to-date training um, to be to be more aware of what the new new uh, requirements or new policies are. The military says they continue to engage with residents as the project unfolds. With the local community, we have a pretty good relationship where we go and talk and we give them the information as needed so that way they're not, they don't have any, any concerns and we have that trust between each other. Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. Time to toss the break. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM, your leader in local news. Rooted in the community since 1995, Kmart is here to serve you 24 hours a day. From essentials to fill your pantry to delightful treats, our selection of groceries have everything you need to stock your kitchen with love. Step directly into style with the latest fashion finds in shoes and clothing for the family at unbeatable prices. Turn your living space into a dream home with our unparalleled selection of home goods. Illuminate your shopping experience and brighten your budget every week with our blue light specials. These specials are a testament to our commitment to offering the biggest variety for the best value. Discover a world where quality and savings meets convenience. Kmart is your one-stop shop where every visit is an adventure. Shop smart and save big at Kmart, your Guam shopping destination. Don't need to work, babe, keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace, and I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. A small to medium Sprite kind of spicy. Uh, let's get a McFlurry after this kind of spicy. But if you get the mighty hot sauce, it's a napkins up for foreheads now kind of spicy. Uh, this came from McDonald's kind of spicy? Because our spicy chicken McNuggets, breaded in tempura and made with cayenne, are just the right amount of spicy. Unless you remember what I said about the sauce. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Welcome back to Primetime. The Guam Power Authority and the Consolidated Commission on Utilities crossing their fingers that the Attorney General finally signs off on a temporary emergency power deal meant to help stave off load shedding in the upcoming summer months. A recently passed law lifted search and procurement regulations, so the project is installed by protests. But GPA also sought reassurance that the AG review process won't also cause a delay. GPA legal counsel Marion Wolschuk and GM John Benaventi with an update. We are waiting for the AG's approval. Like I, I had a meeting with Agreco's lawyer today. There, you know, we have some little changes. I will present them to the AG. We'll see what the AG says. Hopefully they're small and um, unobjectionable and acceptable so that the AG can approve it. And then the PUC will approve it. PUC has already uh, indicated from their doctor's uh, uh, The ALJ has indicated that, uh, you know, he's in favor of it, provided uh, so-and-so are, are met. And, and that's what we're trying to achieve. The Public Utilities Commission meets Thursday evening, GPA rushing to get the temporary generators installed before demand surges begin in May. 
Separately, the Attorney General and Adeloupe remain at odds over the AG's withdrawal of legal representation for more than 20 agencies that are under investigation based on OPA audits. The governor has asked the Supreme Court to weigh in on whether private counsel can be hired to review big-ticket contracts in lieu of the AG. Adeloupe releasing its brief and a key argument is that the AG is in effect holding agency legal services hostage unless they agree to waive important rights more than saying he will continue reviewing their contracts but with the caveat that he does not directly represent them and thus cannot be disqualified from prosecuting alleged corruption but Adeloupe argues that Moylan's organic act role to represent government agencies not subject to his unilateral you know, inconsistent and self-serving qualifications of that duty the AG has submitted a separate brief, no word yet on if and when the Supreme Court might hear oral arguments. Biba mes chamoro. Biba. All month long we showed you how healing, language, and fishing, all vital parts of our culture here in the Marianas. Tonight we wrap up our special series Rooted, and he's no stranger to our KUAM airwaves. Here's the art of weaving with Rokin John Sianko. Rooted is brought to you by Templa. Now open to serve up all your local favorites. and I'm a weaver. I've been a weaver since I was eight years old, so about 20 years and counting now. My introduction to weaving was from my Chamorro teacher in the third grade at Rupi Elementary. She was able to teach me small little things like the pachas, ligal, bolas. But then when I wanted to learn bigger things like the guagua or the tuhong, I really had to figure it out on my own. So I would spend days and afternoons all up at night uh, playing with coconut leaves, trying to figure out how to do it. I actually relocated to Washington State for a little while to finish high school and pursue college. And so I'd come back and refresh my memory of learning what I was able to remember. While I was out there, I had the fortune of learning from native weavers out there. And I was able to kind of piece together different parts of weaving and figure it out. Weaving keeps me rooted to my culture by reminding me to be a good steward of the land. It reminds me to take care of my environment uh, and practice and perpetuate. Weaving may not be for you, but you'd be surprised how much you're able to pick up and how much you're able to share. I always say not one single person can embody an entire culture, so it's important to remember that we all need different parts of ourselves to contribute to the greater culture. Come on down to Sagan Katoda and Chimura every Sunday, 10.30 to 1. We have different woven items every single day that you can come and learn. Excited to weave with you. You can follow me on Instagram at rockinrokin. That is R-O-C-K-I-N underscore R-O-Q-U-I-N. Hope to weave with you soon. That's up. Rooted is brought to you by Templa. Now open to serve up all your local favorites. Now to a message from one of our sponsors to all the faithful this, the most important week of the year, a time to reflect and relive the faith. For this reason, the Universal Church is hosting its annual Day of Power event on Easter Sunday at the UOG Fieldhouse, where families from all over the island will come to celebrate. Holy Wednesday in this holy week, four days away from the big day, Easter Sunday. Nick and Destiny, thank you so much. We are here at the Field House with another family, a beautiful family, the Lazama family, right? Yes. All right, you guys are from which village? We're from Baragada. Baragada village, right? And well, originally from where? We're from Saipan. From Saipan. So all the Carolinians out there are very happy to see you guys here being represented by the Lazama family. And uh, have this event. Everybody's um, joining in and also bringing friends and family. How many are you guys going to come with? 50. Five zero. Yeah. 50 and plus their plus. own family. So uh, more than 50 people are coming. Mm -hmm. And some are even asking right now, uh, how do I join? What do I have to do? What do they have to do? All they need to do is to call and reserve. All right. So you can do that right now. The number's at the bottom of your screen. 671-971-7171. Call, text, or send a WhatsApp message to that number. You can call right now. In case you get a busy tone call again, a lot of people are reserving and there's still space for you to reserve together with them. And everyone who will be present on that day will be receiving the uh, uh, holy oil blessed in Jerusalem, in Israel. 
the Holy Land. It's free for everybody, for the Chamorro, for the Chukis, for the Catholic, for the Mormon, for the Protestant. It's an event for all those who find themselves powerless before their problems. However, they believe that God has power to help them overcome. So they're going to be here. I'm sure that you're calling right now. Join us. Reserve. It's completely free, but you must reserve beforehand. 671-971-7171. Their family is going to be here. I'm sure your family will join us as well. Time for a look at your world at home. Here's a view captured of the bridge at Humatuck Bay. For the first time in 30 years, Coors Light has an ad in the big game. Actually, this is a Miller Light commercial. Now I'm cold refreshment. It's Miller time. Great taste. Less filling. Cold as the Rockies. Chorus commercial. Miller commercial. Actually, it's a Blue Moon commercial. Troy Palamalu Safety. A.K.A. The Quiet Storm. Troy's seen more out of the corners of his cold steel eyes than most mortal men have seen straight on. The last thing an offense would witness? A fury of flowing mane incoming at high speed. Hey! Cat-like quickness and supernatural instincts like Troy's only come once in a lifetime. And oh, how grateful we are that they came in ours. No one made the beloved burg of Pittsburgh feel quite as safe as this safety. The Hyundai Tucson with advanced safety and tech because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Order Pizza Hut now and get a free large pizza later. That's a free pizza on your next order. So you can pizza now, then pizza again. Free pizza means your next dinner is covered. Your future self will thank you. Get it while it's hot. Only at Pizza Hut.
Do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. family is invited to check out Yap Culture Day. It's going to be happening at Ipau Beach Park at the Pavilion on Saturday, March 30th, starting at 10 in the morning and lasting until 4 p.m. But the memories, the love, the island togetherness, and the beautiful culture and art and music and food of our wonderful brothers and sisters from Yap, that lasts a lifetime, so make sure to check it out. Simon Shantares High School. You know I was waiting all week to read this. Good job to my sharks because they are holding a Jawsome 5 5K runaway. Who, who says a Sanchez? We don't know some good wordplay. It's what we do, all right? And we want to invite you to help us raise money. Saturday, April 20th, it's a 5K run walk. Please make sure to register and make sure to get involved. And the autism egg hunt is happening up for our friends in the Marianas. That's going to be held on Saturday the 30th at Sugar King Park for ASD families only starts at 10 a.m. That is what's happening today on News Bites. Stuff happening all over the island. So, register if you need to, and then get involved. Well, up at the Dead Idol Sports Complex today, children from all ages took to the baseball fields and hunted for Easter eggs in today's island-wide Easter fair. Thousands of boiled and plastic eggs rapidly gathered by happy kids and their parents. And not to worry for those of you thinking about today's super sunny conditions up north, there was plenty of free ice cream, cold drinks, and shade to go around. Look at them go. I know, everyone had a happy early Easter and lots of prizes were given away. And Parks and Rec estimates that after eight months of planning, they put into the arrangement of eggs throughout the field. The great hunt lasted all of 30 seconds at most. <laughs> Job well done to all the friends at the agency. It's birthday wishes time. Here's your Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club shout out submitted on KUAM.com. All 170,000 plus of us on Guam all want to send a very happy birthday to John Santos, who celebrates birthday number 40 today. And Dad, with many more years to come, may God continue to watch over you. We love you a million red M&Ms. <laughs> nice. Love always your adoring family. Sus Martinez, Biba, Biba, Cumpleaños, Paritubi. May you have a blessed special day. You are one of a kind, so thoughtful, giving, caring, and very, very loving. God bless your heart and a longer life. From Mully Mary, Frank, your loving wife, Myrna, your beautiful children, and all of my children, and they say, who guides a how. Leisa Janae Schaefer, Biba, Cumpleaños to this young lady, and we are so proud of you. We miss you and your silly little things that you do. Our love and blessings coming from Nana, Papa, Auntie Mary, Uncle Frank, Logan, and the rest of your family. Kane in our sale celebrates birthday number 16 today. And to our handsome grandson, you shine in every way. I'm so proud of the amazing grandson you are. And we hope this year brings you everything that you've been wishing for. The sky's the limit for you today and always. We love you, handsome. Say Grandma Bobby, Papa Joe, and the entire family. And happy blessed eighth birthday to the spiritual great-grandson, Rain Alexander Ray. Remember that for every day of your life, there is something taking care of you and may God continue to hold you in his gentle hands and bring you peace. On this special day, we celebrate how blessed we are when God gave us you. We love you, handsome. Say again, Grandma Bobby, Papa Joe, and the entire family. Estegiz and Mitsu Primetime Show, Sizuos Masi Put Nenega, Guahu Sinek Delgado. Sa Guahu Si Dustini Cruz, Nafan Safu Hamsu Zagose Ipoini. Ali, Mogithin, Hafadei Zantiro, Rainanim, Kasselelier, Lengwo, and Yakwe. Welcome back to another episode of the One Micronesia Show. 
This one was such an honorable one because I got the chance to sit down with none other than His Excellency Surang Wif Jr., the President of the Republic of Palau, to talk about the struggles that Palau went through since October of last year until recently when President Biden signed all three compacts of free association for the Republic of Palau, Federal States of Micronesia, and the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Here's that talk. Gentlemen, if you're if you're watching right now, I'm I'm literally it's an honor to to sit down with the the one and the only the honorable uh, president of uh, Palau, uh, Surang Alwips uh, Jr. Uh, Mr. President, thank you so much for allowing us to to having us sit down and and to chit chat with you about the issue at hand. Well, uh, first of all, you know I I always uh, value uh, the time spent with media. I think it's important. To, first of all. Uh, to hold us as leaders accountable, but also uh, the opportunity to uh, better inform um, our friends around the world about the challenges we have in Micronesia and in Palau and, and how we can work together to promote peace and prosperity for all. So uh, really, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, be able to come on your show and uh, uh, share a little bit about our challenges. I know you wanted to talk about uh, the compact. Yes. And, uh, Last year in January, uh, Palau signed the MOU. And in May, we were the first to sign and conclude our agreement. We all the, we did all of this because it was important for us uh, to have everything done so that we would be part of the uh, uh, appropriation or the budget bill for 2024 mm -hmm. uh, that was supposed to be implemented in, in, on October 1st. Unfortunately, uh, things don't usually happen as we plan, and the Congress has now gone into continuing resolutions, which I guess for RMI and, and FSM, you, you, have, you have money that you continue to get under the continuing, whereas uh, Palau, we're in a little more of a difficult situation because the way our compacts are structured, the money goes down to zero. So uh, we're uh, challenged because we were expecting that money to come come through. And uh, uh, when we when we uh, met in Washington uh, as specific leaders, uh, we were hopeful, <laughs> hopeful that something might happen. But uh, of course, uh, October came and went. Uh, we've been continuing to try to do all we can to inform Washington of how important it is to get this funding passed because even at the levels that FSM and RMI are getting, it's not near the levels that they're expecting. And of course, all our people are expecting uh, to get these funds to, you know, take care of health, education, public safety. You know, I was sharing earlier, we have short 36 officers. We need to hire another 40 teachers. These are things that are all being held because we have the lack of uh, funds and, and, and important infrastructure that needs to be built. So uh, it's really critical, but more importantly, uh, with one of the things I've shared is this is really uh, about the strong partnership that our countries have. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, freely associated states understand is is the challenges we have for security in the region. Uh, you know, I share this with media. Uh, we, we we believe in a free and open Indo-Pacific. We we believe in a a rules-based uh, uh, world order. And and we've had the, you know research vessels from China, four of them during my administration that have come in doing research in our waters, uninvited, uh, and, and claiming that they're sheltering from a storm or whatever. But why do you have uh, research equipment in the water? You know, so those are those are real challenges that we face on a daily basis. We also believe that uh, the only way to really achieve uh, peace is through strength. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the partnership that we have with the United States to help ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific. But at the same time, because of our location, like Yap and Palau, mm -hmm. I mean, we're the, we're the westernmost islands in, in, in the Pacific. And, and so we're uh, at the tip of the spear. And our strategic importance is, is important to the security of the United States. And with that, of course, uh, we say, well, as partners, these compacts are important uh, that we help each other. Very critical. And we've seen it that we've had these compacts for years on years. 
uh, and then now just seeing it kind of come to a little um, or well, pause, I think, and it's affecting. And like you said, you did talk about, you know, uh, some of the issues at hand there in the the beautiful island of Palau, we short of the teachers and officers. So, and, you know, I really hope that, you know, with this and the message that that you put out through the letters, uh, the one with the, the collaborative effort letter with you and the, the, the other two presidents and the, the specific one that you wrote, uh, I hope that, you know, that hope it pushes uh, the, the message out there and to help. Uh, you know, bring a, 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 everything into conclusion and the approval of, of all three compacts to our nations. I guess the positive po positive messages we, we get back from Washington is that both sides, Republicans and Democrats, support this. We wrote letters to senators individually also. And I think the result of that is 24 of them tried to get legislation back on the supplemental. The good news is that I think it's Congressman McCall Foreign Affairs Chair in the House has now made a statement that he's going to get these compacts on the supplemental. He's going to put them on the NDAA. He's going to get it done. Uh, you know, I tell our people that we have to have faith in the system. Sometimes the democracy is not as um, uh, pretty. Uh, dem democratic forms of government are the best uh, because they're open and they're transparent. And debate... Uh, uh, sometimes takes a little longer than just saying go do it. So um, my next, my next, and kind of like oh, towards the final uh, question here is, what, what's a message uh, to the people of Palau who are living um, abroad, especially here in Guam, out there in, in the United States, who might have be questioning like what is what what's happening with the agreements, what's going to happen with them and their livelihood? What message would you have for the people of Palau living abroad? Well, I, I think. Uh... Nothing really changes for the Palauans living abroad uh, as far as uh, they're not going to get kicked out of the United States. This is only the economic assistance package, <laughs> right, that we're talking about here. Um, I think what we've seen over the years is uh, them ensuring that they get those important federal services like Medicaid, mm -hmm. um, uh, student loans, uh, those all uh, continue. Uh, I guess for Palau, our compact is um, we have these review periods, but they're basically it's up until the end. It's 2044 mm -hmm. uh, or 2043 now is the new, new term. Well, I guess in, in closing, uh, in closing, I just want to ask, you know, like, I need, you know, you, you did um, write that uh, collaborative um, letter with the other, the, the two nations here. And so, you know, I guess just to close out on how important is it? is this compact to all three nations? It, it's, it's providing critical services that improve the lives of the people on the islands. And you know, one of the things that um, I, I impressed upon Washington when I was doing, doing my many visits there is under our, uh, the compact, half of our population has left since 1994. They did a study uh, up until 2020 and it was basically half had left. We need to be able to provide uh, an economic base that Palauans uh, don't need to move to America mm -hmm. to uh, look for the land of opportunity or look for the American dream. Mm -hmm. We should be able to create that dream in Palau. That's good for security. That's good for uh, uh, making sure that uh, the people that grew up here take care and, and, and live and prosper in these islands that we've been blessed with, along with our partners. Uh, many of them have uh, joined the military. Uh, one of the things that we're hoping that maybe something that can happen in the future is have a reserves set up in Palau. Uh, also uh, the opportunity to just bring them back and retire here and, and contribute to the building of our nation. I mean, our nations. All right. Well, that's that's all the questions I have for for you, uh, Mr. President. Um, in closing, any closing remarks before we uh, we wrap things up here? Well, no. Just thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Uh, as uh, Micronesians, we need to uh, stick together. Uh, we are stronger together. Uh, you know, I th I think one of the examples of that was when we banded together to make a statement to PIF, mm -hmm. and we said. Uh, we're not going to be part of this organization if they're not going to respect us. And I think we've gotten back together. It's all Pacific Island countries, and we are stronger together. So uh, it's a pleasure to work with uh, uh, our fellow presidents from Micronesia in 
and pushing our issues, whether it's climate change or compacts or wherever forward, because uh, we need to we need to stick together. And, and because of our small populations and we're dispersed, sometimes we're not heard. So we got to stand up for each other. Definitely a one Micronesia. That's for sure. That's right. Sulang and Kamrad, President Surangal Whips Jr. for the talk. Thank you so much. Guys, we're going to take a break. We're back with more of the One Micronesia Show. Introducing GTA Scratch, Save, and Win. At GTA, everyone wins big with huge savings on the latest smartphones. Here's how to play. Get a Scratch card when you sign up for a new Live Unlimited plan. Then Scratch and save up to $500 off your new smartphone. It's that easy. Plus, one lucky winner will instantly win a free phone of their choice. There's never been a better time to switch to GTA, Guam's most reliable network. Don't miss your chance to Scratch, Save, and Win with GTA. Visit us in-store or online at GTA.com. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. You're back. And we're back. The One Micronesia Show continues. Now, this one recently, the UOG Center for Island Sustainability, in partnership with the Sea Grants, Guam Green Growth, recently inducted new cohorts into their new program. And these students were from uh, the FSM, Palau, and CNMI. So let's go check out the ceremony and get to know these new cohorts. The University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability and Sea Grant, in collaboration with Guam Green Growth, launched the second cohort of its region-focused G3 Local 2030 Island Network Conservation Corps. The event was held back in February 19 at the OG Residence Hall. The G3 Local 2030 Islands Network Conservation Corps is specifically designed to equip university dorm residents from the Federal States of Micronesia, Republic of Palau, Republic of the Marshall Islands, and the Commonwealth of Northern Marianas with skills and knowledge necessary for emerging green economy while addressing pressing environmental concerns in the region. Current member Magim Reb from Palau, who is majoring in civil engineering, explains why he decided to take part in the Corps. And I joined the G3 cohorts uh, to help my island with the uh, new ideas that I learned from this program. And from the past semester, from what I learned was like um, civil engagement with planting trees, community service, uh, and the unity with the community and everybody that gets together to keep the island uh, clean and working for a sustainable future. Um, one of the things that um, I found very interesting was um, how to have soil control uh, due to the erosion from rain. Uh, we plant trees to hold the sediments down. At the same time, these trees help uh, the native plants grow. And that's something I want to bring back to my home. Mareb, in fact, has an idea of where in Palau he wants to use what he's learned from the program. Uh, down in Honto, which is more towards the north side, and we have like dead lands over there. So that's something where I want to address. And for this semester, we're going to be looking into like um, uh, recycle and use these um, materials as uh, repurp repurposing these materials. So that's something I want to learn too and bring back home. Don David, who is from Pompeii, is majoring in tropical agriculture, says he turned to this program in 2023. So I can uh, learn a lot of what they uh, can teach us so we can uh, bring it back home. Uh, but based on my experience from this program, we really work on an uh, invasive species and working with the community and helping the community for what uh, challenges they have in here on Guam and also if we can apply to bring it back home. Core members will receive practical training across very sustainability themes. Focus areas will include agriculture, aquaculture, island beautification, invasive species mitigation, reforestation, circular economy practices, ocean conservation, and harnessing renewable energy. Additionally, they will participate in activities that promote civic engagement and leadership. Representing Saipan is business administration major, Arya. The experiences that I have, um, you know, been doing for the past, like last semester, was basically like trying to, you know, make a difference here in our uh, dorms. 
and you know we just currently built a, a nursery or a garden for growing plants and hopefully that once we grow enough uh, like fruits or vegetables it's free for residents that are living here in the dorms so they're free to take it none other than that we get to experience off campus which is planting trees and also um, being you know certified with others like CPR and, and other things that we did was it was really great her biggest takeaway so what I would like to, you know, take away is like, you know, the gain, uh, the experiences and the knowledge that I have gained from this program. So like um, basically um, trying to like conserve water and, you know, it's important that we would, I would like to bring that back to Saipan, you know, because we have like issues with the waters in, in Saipan and, you know, no one would like uh, to drink or shower with salt water so I was thinking of trying to um, you know conserve with the rainwater make it useful trying to build like a water catchment system that can be really useful and hopefully that things that I made here I could actually bring back to my own home island. Dr. Austin Shelton director of EOG Center for Island Sustainability and Sea Grant stated this program is not just about one-way learning as you embark on this journey, you will impair your unique island perspectives from your homes, enriching our community with diverse insights. Shelton also underscored the crucial role of the G3 Local 2030 Islands Network Conservation Corps in advancing the broader movements towards achieving the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in Guam and the region. And so by having this conservation corps, the Guam Green Growth Local 2030 Islands Network Conservation Corps, we're bringing back these practices, this knowledge, and sharing it with our community to remind all of us that we were sustainable islands and we will be again, and we can face any of the global challenges that are coming towards us. These impacts of climate change that are right here at our front doors, we don't have to sit back and just let it happen. We will be resilient, we will overcome them, and we will do that together um, throughout your cohort and all of the lessons that we share between our islands together. So congratulations on getting into the program, and let's make a big difference and make a big impact this semester. The U.S. Department of State via the NOAA National Sea Grant College Program provided federal funding to establish the G3 Local 2030 Islands Network Conservation Corps. Congratulations to the new members of the second cohort. Good luck and thank you guys for all that you are doing now for a better Micronesia. Wow, what an amazing opportunity to meet these young individuals who are so excited for what's to come in this program and representing their islands at the same time. Guys, we're going to take a break. We're back with more of the One Micronesia Show. Looks like it's Brian time, Mom. Dr. Garcia? Ooh. Crest Reality Checkup. That grimy film on your teeth, it's actually the buildup of plaque bacteria, which can cause cavities in months. And your toothpaste just isn't cutting it. Most toothpaste quit working in minutes, but the antibacterial fluoride and Crest Pro Health protect for up to 12 hours. So I can stop cavities before they start. Well, well, can I get a latte? The number one toothpaste brand in America, Crest. <sighs> Unlock your brightest smile with Crest. Available now at Payless. Find a plan that goes with your flow. Get unlimited local talk, text, and data at the most affordable rate with unlimited flow postpaid. Biba Mess tomorrow. What a month of celebration of cultural heritage here on Guam. And what a way to do it than at the Valley of the Laddie. So you ready? Let's go. Hey everyone, Guahu C. Chloe. 
So for today's workshop, um, we started off with riding the boat, going, um, starting to go up the river. We stopped at what we call Laddie Dock, the uh, village site. We got down. We were welcomed by uh, my coworker Kanai. Um, we also did a little bit of an eco tour and introduction to um, how to open up a coconut. husking it and then grating it as well. Everybody took turns um, grating the coconut. And then um, after that, all that hard work was done, we finished the eco tour. We started walking over um, to start our workshop. Just from the coconut in here and also a little bit of water. And then all the meat that we grated. So you just gather it, you bunch it up together and you just squeeze. And after we squeezed the coconut milk, we did not waste the dry coconut. We took that and we made coconut candy. Added a little sugar. Let that caramelize. And then we throw in the coconut. And that's how you make coconut candy. After the coconut oil and coconut candy making workshop, we joined in with the bigger group and we got to see a live action fire making show. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make fire. We're going to be using the hibiscus. It's a wild hibiscus. And after that, we continued on our journey down the road. We got to see the many live animals there. Talk about goats, the pigs, the deer. And to cap it all off, we ended it with a carabao ride. What a way to experience Mesh Chamorro down at the Valley of the Laddie. Guys, don't forget to go check out their website, their Instagram, to find out where workshops at this month of Mesh Chamorro. A big thank you to the crew there at the Valley of the Laddie for an amazing hospitality, amazing show, and an amazing good time. Thank you guys so much. Zeus Maasi and Kamrad. Thank you so much to Dave Taikinko and the team down there at the Valley of the Laddie. Such an amazing workshop to, to make coconut oil and to make coconut candy. And there's more workshops in stores for you guys. All you have to do is go check them out on the IG, their website, to find out what workshop is there each and every weekend here in the month of Mesh tomorrow. Be about Mesh tomorrow. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back of the One Micronesia Show. Brian Dawkins. Safety, a.k.a. Weapon X. Brian laughs at audibles. Laughs. For there is nothing he does not anticipate. He is never caught off guard because his guard is always up. His skills of perception are honed like talons. Brian sees all. He knows all. Dominates all. His defensive prowess is feared the world over. The all-electric Hyundai Ionic 5 with advanced safety and tech. Because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Search for your Hyundai Ionic 5 today. One Micronesia show and we're back for the last and the most entertaining one because we are here with the One Mic Jam Session. This one, I am so excited because Sister Tanel from Tonga recently was in Palau, had a great time in Palau 
and did a big concert and for them in Palau it's, it's been a very long time since a big artist had visited so that was very iconic for the people of Palau and what she did as well is she shot a music video and you know what I'm just gonna stop talking and let you guys enjoy this music video check it you guys are all gonna be in that music video 